Hey everybody, welcome to On Podcast, the uh, On Microsoft Podcast, the official one. Uh, there are none others. Uh, <laughs> I am joined with, uh, I, my name is Kareem and I'm here today with the world's greatest co-host. Arif Bacchus. Yeah, and we're here today, um, sans hardware, uh, but we should have some more stuff coming up uh, about that. So this will be more of a, a regular podcast, uh, hopefully regular time frame. We're going to kind of, you know, drill down into the news real quick and uh, just off the bat we're going to start off with our uh surface news recap i mean like i said we don't have any hardware but microsoft has tons of hardware to talk about uh this month so we're doing that and then we'll also be talking about the xbox one not xbox one series x xbox series x yeah. review. some mm-hmm. uh some some outlet news outlets got review units so we'll be talking about the summary of their reviews and some people's early thoughts and we'll chime in yeah and then we'll follow it up with uh the bigger news i think is which is uh microsoft 365 going down from uh you know tons of people uh, across the u.s and uh, canada and some other uh, international areas um it was a big outage uh, microsoft was relatively quick to address it, but we'll talk about it regardless. And then we'll also get into Windows 10 on ARM getting its long awaited uh, X60, X64 bit app emulation. Finally. And then Kareem will guide us through the week ahead. Yeah, I mean, that's again, that's just more news about Windows 10 uh, and where we're at with our release dates for some uh, Windows 10 news. Uh, stuff about Teams as well, and uh, some things that Skype is kind of uh, piggybacking on. Uh, I don't know how effective it'll be, but hey, it's nice to you know see that they're s- still kind of going develop- developmentally down the same path. Uh, with that being said, let's get into our first topic, uh, which is our Surface laptop news. Uh, I mean, Surface event that they had. Uh, it was, <laughs> Jump know, the it was gun. Like, you jumped the gun. I did. I apologize. It was a, <laughs> a Surface recap that we're doing. Um, and they had an event, uh, digital virtual, as many are doing these days. I think it was, I don't know, twenty five minutes. It was relatively short. It was like it was a it was a nine minute uh, video that they released on YouTube, and it was uh, released in blog posts, not no actual events because of uh, coronavirus. Normally, it would be in New York, but uh, as it's been the theme with Apple and Google and all these other companies, they just uh, announced it in a blog post, and a couple minutes afterwards. They had the the briefing uh, go live that the media saw that we saw ahead of time. Uh, they just pre-recorded it and put it up on YouTube for everyone to see where where Panos goes through the two new products, which were Surface Laptop Go and a new top end Surface Pro X model. Yeah, um, I was intrigued, obviously by both, but uh, I you know I kind of like the more traditional approach. So I liked I was looking at the Surface Laptop Go. Um, what they're talking about this time around uh, is a smaller Surface laptop, essentially. It's not a four or five or anything. It's its own category. Uh, again, I wrote about how I think the Go is now going to be their line for small and mobile, uh, mm-hmm. s- small and portable versions of, of their flagship lines. So we have the Surface Go instead of the Surface Pro. We have the Surface Laptop Go. Who knows what they'll come up with that's smaller, but <laughs> expect to see Go as part of it. Uh, as part of the Go, we are... People will be getting, uh, anybody who wants to pre-order, a, a 12.4-inch pixel sense touch screen display. Um, so you're getting the same sort of um, display panel, not the exact same one as the Pro or even the Go, actually, as far as uh, DPI and pixel uh, count. But it's, I think it's a 1080p, essentially. Um, you get uh, an i5, uh, Intel's latest i5. Uh, quad-core processor, which is pretty big. I think that's the biggest selling point is a processor in this thing. Um, you'll also get, you know, a USB-A, a USB-C port, just like, you know, the the Go has and the Surface Laptop 3s are coming with. Uh, you still get a uh, headphone jack, mic combos, uh, so that's pretty nice. Um, you get a 720p uh, webcam, which, again, is sort of a downgrade from the laptop, which uh, has, uh, I think it's 1080, right? The yeah. laptops the 1080p. So you mean this is start this is where you start to see some of the like you know uh, sacrifices for the yeah. price. Yep. The sacrifices for the price. Um, you still get studio mics. I think you get the Omnisonic uh, soundboard, which again plays from underneath the uh, keyboard, which is so far for most uh, laptop devices from the Surface line have been really good. Uh, I'll be interested to see how this one fares, uh, having a smaller uh, footprint to to play with. 
Um, you get Dolby uh, audio support. Um, and, uh, and a 3 to 2 aspect ratio screen, which, which, is a, which is a big thing because it used to only be a Microsoft thing, but uh, I covered it for my other gig. Uh, HP came up with a new spectrum that, know, has, the, that has the 3 to 2 aspect ratio. So for, uh, for what is it, $550, you're getting a laptop that you'll be able to use on the go and get more more of that vertical space. I think HP said on theirs, it's something around 20% more screen real estate to see stuff and to do your scrolling. So it's, even though, like you said, it's not a high resolution screen that you would get on a, on a Pro or a Surface Go, it's still three to two aspect ratio. So you're getting more, more space to stack your windows side by side and to get more things done. Now, uh, with that being said, um, I do like to at least try and speak to the reality of these devices and the prices. Um, the 500 will get you, you know, the four gigabyte 64. Slow EMC. Uh, four gigabytes EMMC of M64. Storage, yeah, yep. It's not very good storage. But, you know, realis realistically speaking, if you get to around hit the 750 price mark, you'll be getting uh, up to 16 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, 250 gigabytes of solid state storage. So, you know, realistically speaking, this Surface Go is about a $700 device uh, when all is said and done and you get what you know what you really need. And you'll also be getting, for some reason, they are still pushing uh, uh, Windows 10S. So <laughs> you'll be able to bounce out of yeah, that yeah. Uh, and get yourself, a, you know, a really robust computer for, like I said, it's about $750 uh, when all is said and done. And, and you're so not getting... Looking forward to it. And you're not getting as slow as hell. Uh, no. What is it? Pentium Gold or M3. You're getting a 10 gen Intel Core i5, which is quad core. So or you'll be getting. For Apple, right? Like, because I think yeah. they're kind of positioned. For $1,000 like, on Apple, yeah. you're getting a dual core processor, which isn't even. Uh, well, it is 10 gen, but it's only, I think, I think it's a 9 watt processor because it's their custom processor. But exactly. on the Surface Laptop Go, it's a 15 watt. So you'll be yeah. able to run things at a higher, longer pace and not get any any throttling. So it's 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 worth it for the money. Yeah. I would I would say personally. You save yourself 300 bucks and you get two additional color options as well. If so. I didn't already yeah. have a 15 inch Surface laptop, I would run out and go buy that right away. <laughs> there you go. Um, again, we look forward to writing about it some more, getting some hands on when we get a chance to, and we'll keep you guys up to date uh, as as time comes as time goes on with that one. Well, we're still not done yet. There's still more no. surface stuff. Yeah, this about. is this is probably the more intriguing one, and I'll let uh, Eric talk about this one. Because if you guys remember, I actually owned the original Surface Pro X for a few weeks, and then cautious now. This is this is a very touchy subject. It wasn't it wasn't going my way, and I ended up returning it, and I gave it a bad review. But there That's is no. But I guess they listened to me and the thousands of other people that didn't like the performance on the original Surface Pro X because there's a new model, top end model at least, coming out. That's uh, I think it's fifteen hundred dollars, but it's not. It's the same as what you get on the outside. Same, same, same as the original Surface Pro X, but it's what's inside in this new model that matters. You're getting a Microsoft SQ2 processor which is the next gen of their original uh, custom ARM-based processor inside and a new Adreno 690 GPU inside. So basically this new model is just a, is just an internal refresh, same design, just internal refresh. So you're gonna get uh, better speeds for, for your multitasking or whatever, but Microsoft didn't specifically say anything or at least they didn't tell us the press anything about performance differences, but we've seen the new Snapdragon chips come out in new in new ARM laptops. So I believe that there'll probably be, if not a big, but at least a little jump in performance for people who are looking to buy the, the Surface Pro X, the new top end model, to get the most out of that always connected LTE, if you know what I mean. Well, yeah, speaking of LTE, uh, we still don't know officially if this will be have a 5G modem or if they'll be putting out what kind of like they did with the uh, Pro Surface Pro when they had a Surface Pro and then they would make an LTE version that would come out months later, really under the radar. So um, for anybody expecting 5G, um, these new models that they announced uh, earlier this week, 
didn't have any mention of that, but it doesn't mean that they won't, you know, couldn't put out something uh, in Q1 that'll, you know, follow the same suit and have 5G at some point. I do believe that the Qualcomm, the new Qualcomm chips, we talked about it in our first episode of the podcast. They do support 5G, but I looked through the spec sheets uh, that Microsoft gave us. And I don't see nothing on there about 5G, so probably not going to be a 5G device, but the differences are for that SQ. Q2 processor and getting them getting that performance jump, even though they didn't specifically give us anything. But I'm sure there'll be people out there who will buy it and will notice a difference. Well, um, something we're talking about later on may be uh, what they're waiting to announce, um, and we'll get to it in a little bit. But it'll definitely make the value proposition for the Surface Pro X uh, that much greater because uh, you know they can put all the chips in there they want. They can you know, cool it as, as quickly as they can. But at the end of the day, it comes down to Windows 10 on ARM. And that's where Microsoft needs yeah. a lot of work to do. And like I said, what we're going to talk about in a little bit, we'll kind of address that. They also improved the battery life. I forgot to mention that. They said yeah. up to 15 hours of battery life, thanks to the new SQ2 chips and the new emulation, which we're about to discuss in our next segment later yeah. on. Yeah. But there uh, are so accessories too, right? Yeah, yeah, that's I think you know the more attainable thing. Again, if you're not, if you already have your work from home station set up, if you already have a robust computer, things like that, here are some Surface related uh, peripherals that you guys can grab. Um, I think that we have a designer compact keyboard, which um, again, if you're looking to at some point once this is all said and done, start traveling again and, and doing work okay. on the go. Uh, that'll be great. Or if you just want to, you know, downsize your home office to, to, you know, make room for a hobby or something as well. That's another another cool get. You can get that. I believe that's going to be around 70 bucks for that one. Um, Microsoft does great with keyboards. They've been doing great for keyboards even long before they had the Surface line. So um, I expect that to follow suit. Um, we also have uh, their ergonomic Bluetooth keyboard and mouse combo uh, they've updated. Um, that'll be a combo, I believe, for, is that? $50. $50 for both. Um, and then you have the Surface Mobile Mouse. Um, again, not new, but uh, they're getting some new color variants to match the, the new color palette that they're going with the, the Surface, uh, new Surface laptops, laptop goes. And the color palettes so far are more, again, I think it's just the color of the season, pastel-ish. They're a lot uh, softer in tone, so... I think they have, uh, what was it, sandstone, like a light blue, and I think they still have their platinum option as well. Uh, and so these mouses uh, will uh, match, will color match suit. Um, and then we think they're introducing a uh, wire, 4K wireless adapter uh, to, again, support 4K resolution uh, if, you know, for those monitors, uh, or if you're just using your TV as your new big monitor, uh, this will be able to kind of hook up your Surface uh, and you know other devices to 4K screens, um, and that I think is that was a little pricey at about 70 bucks, 70 but off, yeah. um, you know it's a Surface one, so ideally it'll last. It's a lot of fancy accessories to pair up with your new devices. Yeah, I'm waiting for them to get the color match for the headphones and. In the earbuds, stuff like that. That's what I'm looking forward to. So hopefully they'll mess <laughs> with that. Never can have their sandstone headphones with their sandstone laptop go and their sandstone sandstone <laughs> pen, and you know it's a whole thing. <laughs> well, if uh, Surface wasn't enough for you guys, we also have some Xbox news, right? Yeah, yeah, we have. I mean, we'll, like, it seems like every week we have bombshell news about the Xbox, um, but uh, it seems that um, people got. Uh, some review units. Prior to that, they had gotten um, devices. They had gotten the devices up, but couldn't actually talk about anything. Uh, really, they just kind of were able to take pictures, do some dimension comparisons. Uh, you know, just kind of like the back. duo. Exactly, just like the <laughs> duo. Uh, I think I forget who it was. You might be from. I think it was from CNET. One of the journalists went out and did an IKEA test for that. That was kind of cool and kind of uh, creative to kind of see how um, the Xbox, uh, both the Xbox Series X and the Series S fit on, uh, you know, all kind of shoving units, things like that. And for the most part, they seem to fit uh, both vertically and horizontally. Um, but m more specifically, this week, we actually got people that were able to turn on the device and kind of do some 
uh, preliminary uh, performance tests. And, and, and our, 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 our writer, Laurent, he put together a nice featured piece where he looked at all of these reviews and he gave us a little bit perspective. And so basically it was The Verge, IGN, Venture Beat, and GameSpot. Uh, their writers all got Xbox Series X units. Not us. And we're looking Not at you, us. Microsoft. But we we do have one pre-ordered, like we talked about the other week. So yeah. we, if not if not myself, that'll do a review. Maybe Laurent, our other writer, or, or someone on the crew will have a review coming because we are all for Xbox. Yes. But anyway, going back to what I was saying, uh, these writers they they spoke about the design, uh, the controller. The storage, the SSD, and the performance. Yeah. So speaking about the design, a lot of people like the overall design. They're like, it's a premium-looking console that you'll need to take care of. That's what our writers said about it. So overall, they, they like the design and the build quality. And I believe a writer from Ars Technica said that because it has a matte black finish, it could get scratched easily, and that it's a fingerprint magnet. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how often people are actually, aside from the power button, I don't know how often oh, people yeah. are touching the outside of the box all that much. I mean, uh, my Xbox One X uh, or One is a fingerprint magnet only around the power button. Like, I have, <laughs> It's a dust magnet everywhere else. But anyway, they, they also talked about the controller and they're like, uh, the, the controllers have better weight distribution and that it's one of the best Microsoft's best, best Xbox controllers ever. And then they also got into the storage. You know, these consoles are coming with one terabyte. So a lot of the writers found that only 802 gigabytes is usable because of the, the way the system and the Xbox OS takes up the storage. But they also, a big improvement, which is something that I'm looking forward to, is that they're like, the system is able to boot more quickly uh, from always on, it always on actually means always on this time. And uh, from a cold boot, it's only 10 to 12 seconds. And and also, if that wasn't enough, they also talked about the new quick resume feature, which a lot Microsoft has been talking up. They're like, uh, it went, f well, let me look at my notes here. They said quick resume really impressed them It in wait from standby mode to uh, Grand Theft Auto 4 and games like No Man's Sky and Final Fantasy, it resumed in under 90 seconds. Yeah, um, there are some, I mean, we'll have the get the whole collection of reviews, but uh, if you watch the video, that's basically kind of the, the tombstoning that we'd seen early on in mobile, uh, where, uh, you know, your first three or four apps in, in line of... Uh, of uh, usage can quick resume and that's kind of how the games are doing obviously a game that's you know eighth or ninth in your in your queue of, of play will take a little bit more time to resume but like within the first three or four games they were able to kind of load up and, and kind of put you back into where you were at um, again barring any type of break in game slash entertainment use so if you had like a spotify then you flash to a game then flash back to I don't know the store, and then flash back to a game. So again, in 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 totality, if you had like three games, like Red Dead and something else, and another game, you're able to kind of quickly go back in and out of those. That's a better way of putting it. <laughs> but also, so, okay. yeah, good. The SSD too. Uh, Tom Warren said that load times are more than a minute less than they are in games like, uh, like Sea of Thieves and Destiny 2 because the SSD is NVMe. So it's super fast compared to the traditional spinning hard drive in the older Xboxes. Yeah, so again, uh, there was all this talk about Sony's you know, miraculous uh, SSDs and uh, it looks like there's some, some magic going on with the Xbox as well. And then there's also the performance. Uh, Apparently, the new Xbox Series X is able to run more stable frame rates. Uh, Digital Foundry said that dead, dead, what is it? dead or Alive 6 is able to run in the 4K graphics mode on both X Series X and Xbox One X. And the game is locked at 60 frames on the new Xbox, but it's between 30 and 40 on the older Xbox. So it, this, this is a big performance improvement in the console. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's again, 
it's interesting to see Xbox kind of lead the way with this news right now. We're still waiting to kind of see Sony match that. I mean, I'm assuming they will, but um, they're taking a sweet time on, on matching the frame rate I- issue. And I know that a lot of a lot of people have that in question, uh, despite you know them having the exclusive games. It's still you know how are they going to uh, match with this like new throttling system that they have in place? But you know it's Sony, so I expect it to to work it. You know. Well, gen- generally speaking, anyone who tried it, all these writers who tried it said it's hard- harder to go back to the older Xbox after they <laughs> played a new one. So I'm yeah. pretty sure Microsoft is doing something good here. Yeah, and, and, and you know, they'll just keep riding this wave of hopefully uh, goodwill that they've been earned, that they've been building up. Where well, they did it- do some stuff is on the actual <laughs> enterprise side this, that's, uh, that's- this, this past week. That's what we, I was uh, just going to say. <laughs> yeah, we had a big outage, a uh, five-hour run, uh, which affected logins. And, you know, I was getting, personally, anecdotally, I was getting people reaching out to me saying they couldn't log into their email and things like that. Usually, I'll get some, you know, notifications about Azure going down, which was part of this. But uh, the whole Microsoft 365 service stack seemed to have had an issue, uh, which included the Azure portal, uh, which included authentication for Outlook and uh, Office and, and some other and Skype and things like that. Uh, like I said, it was about five hours uh, going. Um, they don't know uh, as of right now the, the the root cause of this. They're doing an incident report, and they you know will obviously put out uh, kind of the information once they have it. Um, they think. They, they ruled out uh, a, a code change that they thought might have been an issue because uh, as part of the solution, they rolled back, uh, rolled back uh, before the outage. Um, and it you know, seems to have worked um, regardless. Uh, things are up and going now for Microsoft. Um, I, think it, than, I, I think it was something with, their, with just the logins. It was something caused... By uh, by, I think it was maybe something on their end. It was a change that they had put, and they needed to roll it back in order to have everyone log back in. Right, but they they well, I mean, yeah, they they were able to kind of roll back the whatever the change was, but they still don't know exactly what the change yeah. specifically is. And so um, again, we'll get further information about that. But again, if you had issues and you were just kind of scratching your head for <laughs> a little bit, that's that's what happened. Um, uh, it's not often that Microsoft 365 goes down, but you know we're we're seeing uh, strain on people, you know, uh, yeah. changing Work the from workflow. Home. Yep. Uh, yeah, and so uh, you know people are you know staying on there uh, in the server a lot longer than they normally would, you know, at a desk or you know at work hours things like that. So again, I don't expect it to. To, to happen quite often, but you know, anything's possible these days. But speaking of working from home, time to move on to our fourth topic, which is about Windows 10 on ARM getting the long-awaited 64-bit yes. application support. Yes, uh, uh, it's about time. It was announced the day before the Surface event. It was announced in a blog post by Panos, and it was related to Windows momentum, and specifically the, in the line he said. We will also expand support for running X64 apps with X64 emulation starting to roll out to the Windows Insider program in November. So it's a change that to me, it looks like they're going to test it with Windows Insiders, and then they're going to start rolling out 64-bit app support to people who have the new Surface Pro X top end model, as well as the older Surface Pro X and anyone with a Windows 10 on ARM device. Yeah, all like six of us are gonna like jump for joy with this. <laughs> I mean, again, as we mentioned earlier about the uh, Pro X and uh, the new SQ SQ2 chip, um, uh, it's you know a lot of that work that they're doing in this for GPU stuff. Uh, and again, uh, Office uses a lot of the GPU to kind of fly through apps and and load stuff, things like that. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, I think as Eric can kind of attest to, it was the emulation level, uh, the stack of apps that just couldn't either be run or weren't run well on this. So it caused a lot of issues, a lot of jankiness for for uh, people who were looking to get on ARM. I think if they can nail this, big if, that uh, this is huge. This could be their Rosetta, uh, so to speak, like Apple's doing with their ARM. If they can get uh, this ARM64 emulation 
running well, uh, you know, the sky's the limit for ARM now. They already did it for their own apps. I think Edge has a new ARM version, and the yeah. Teams got a teams. new ARM version too. Right. So they're on their way there to supporting it. There was a list, a community list. I think it's an Excel spreadsheet of all the apps that don't work with Windows 10 and ARM. So it's nice to see that they're they're listening to feedback and fixing their mistakes. Maybe this will get more people interested in buying a Pro X and making it a bit more mainstream and not just a device for the Microsoft fans. Yeah, like I said, if they can nail this emulation layer, uh, again, a lot of those you know rough edges that people said they couldn't get around for Windows 10 and ARM and all of the, the finger wagging that, you know, since Apple's talked about the ARM that they've been pointing at Microsoft, I think starts to go away because now you can say, hey, I, I've gotten, I get the Windows 10 experience just on a, a, a device that, you know, runs cooler, runs quieter, runs longer. And again, it's not just Microsoft devices and not just the Pro X. Yeah. They did say in their blog post that they're working with Acer, HP, Lenovo, and Samsung to bring the uh, Windows 10 on ARM innovation, which is 64-bit app emulation, to their to all those types of products. So the future is bright for Windows 10 on ARM. Yeah, I expect to see at uh, hopefully at CES and uh, you know virtual mobile world congress or whatnot, whatnot. We'll probably start hearing more of these uh, devices that were in the pipeline for ARM. I know that it seems like everybody kind of took a pause on ARM and started moving towards AMD. Uh, as a variant. Um, so uh, again, if Microsoft has been working on this for quite a bit, um, we should ideally start to see some more of these Windows on ARM P- devices come out in 2021. But speaking of Windows, that's going to lead us into our week ahead segment. Yeah, um, we have uh, Windows 10 20H2 uh, uh, being released um, with, soon. Uh, with another soon. We, we right, think it's soon. coming soon. Uh, it's being tested with insiders uh, in the beta and release preview channels. Uh, the new build, uh, which I think is 1904.2.546. Oh, uh, all with uh, the weird numbers. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if you're an insider, I'm sure you've already gotten it, um, depending yeah, on obviously which level you're in. They're, uh, they're releasing more of those service updates, so it's cl- it's they're getting ready to release it to the general public soon, as, l- as long as we keep seeing these smaller and smaller build numbers uh, keep coming along. Yeah, and it's supposed to be fixing some issues that were preventing devices from entering modern standby, uh, some reliability issues uh, in Microsoft Edge, uh, you know, something that had to do with multi-windows and tabbing. So again, keep, keep a lookout uh, if you see it, jump on it and try it out. Um, it should be pretty stable enough to make it your, your daily driver. Um, the next thing we got is Skype getting some uh, Teams love. Oh yeah, Skype uh, picked up the, the, what is it? The, the, uh, the ha- hands up feature, raise your yeah. hand feature from Teams. So Skype is becoming more popular now, or people are using it more in their taskbar because they did add it to the taskbar with that insider build. I don't know you used it. Yeah, it's uh, the process, and I'll have to record it at some point, or maybe Cody can make a video about it. Uh, It's really pretty streamlined. You hit the button, the the little thing, and and a browser pops up just like you would for Zoom. Uh, It goes through the same sort of process. Let me test your... Do I have permission to attach the microphone, your video, and uh, start a meeting uh, in the same way that Google Hangout does? You Once you're in the meeting, you can start to also send out invites from that meeting as well to enjoy, get other people to join. So it's super cool to just kind of have that uh, ready. You don't need to go search on the internet. You don't need to really uh, download extra software. Point is, Skype is, Microsoft has not forgotten about Skype like people thought they would. Because uh, so far it's been added to the task bar for insiders, and then it got the raise hand feature too. So uh, people are actively using Skype still, and not just moving to Teams. Yeah, it's it's still a verb. I mean, people <laughs> people will will still say, "Can I Skype you?" Uh, and it you know yeah. it's kind of like the Kleenex version of stuff. Skype meaning any type of virtual conference, especially if you're an older person. <laughs> and one more thing for the list. Uh, another Microsoft product is Edge. We think more Edge news will be coming soon. Yeah, well, we got, what is it, it says that um, it, 
the, the more Microsoft says that Edge has become more efficient, multi-processes and architectures. Um, the company explained how Microsoft Edge is uh, using system resources. Uh, I mean, it's stuff we kind of already known um, that, you know, it's kind of baked into Windows despite what they, they say about it. Um, but um, they said the browser would be split into two different processes and all of the work together gives them a custom browsing experience. Uh, it's, you know. Basically, them saying that Edge is faster than ever and is better than Chrome, one way or another. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, to be honest with you, uh, I think we had a, about two or three weeks ago, we wrote a report about how uh, Edge is kind of gaining, again, momentum as far as people using Chrome and Edge. I don't know. I don't think people are replacing it just yet, but uh, there is a multitude of people, when, at least in the Windows world, using both um, and, and using both relatively uh, at the same pace as each other. So Edge is becoming big. Time to switch to Edge, everyone. <laughs> Arif told you that, okay? If it goes <laughs> down, it's, it's, this guy's issue. I love Edge. I, I use it as my only one. Um, I go into Google.com if I need to use any Google things. But yeah, Edge is, and my computers have been running fine. Same thing. I have not touched uh, Chrome since Edge uh, was installed. Yeah, it's gotten really good. And uh, for anybody who's looking at Windows 10 S, uh, learn your web apps because that makes a whole hell of a lot of difference. Um, and, and you can get a lot done uh, with those. So, you know, go to your favorite websites, pin them as apps, and that's a small workaround for some stuff. I know you can't do all of it, but at least, you know, Edge has done well with web apps. Speaking of websites, we just want to mention a quick note is that we've expanded our podcast beyond YouTube. We're on more platforms now. Uh, we're also we're on Spotify, we're on SoundCloud, we're on Google Podcasts, and we're also on Apple Podcasts. So pretty much anywhere you could listen, you'll find us now. Yeah, and uh, with that being said, there's one other thing we want to tease before we kind of close things up, and that's that we'll be having a giveaway. Um, you know this. As we talk about Xbox, uh, we want to make sure that we don't forget about our PC gamers, and we'll be having something special uh, for you guys, uh, those of you interested in PC gaming. So just kind of keep an eye on our, on our site and uh, on our social media, and we'll give you details about that in the coming days. I'm so jealous because you guys are probably going to get like a fancy laptop or something oh, that can play Microsoft. They're, they're, they're can getting play. The, one of the fanciest ones. I, I kind of want to keep them right. If there's a way to rig this, I will figure it out. <laughs> I hey, I, I want it too so I could play Microsoft <laughs> Flight Simulator. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll have to see. We'll, we'll, we'll try not to be as overt about rigging it, but we'll see if we can figure that out to keep this. It's really <laughs> awesome. All right. So I think we pretty much covered everything that we had planned, and that will be all for our podcast this week. So we thank you for tuning in, and be sure to follow us on Twitter at on Microsoft. I am at a back journey and you are i'm at mindhead one uh so on twitter be sure to follow us and be sure to tune in every week and keep tuned to on microsoft for all your microsoft news any final thoughts yeah no i just want everyone to have a great week ahead again stay safe uh wear your mask beware of others and enjoy uh any, any and everything that makes you happy all right thank you for tuning in everyone and have a beautiful week ahead bye thank you